In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to do a multi-ring buffer, how to style it with a dash, but do, do not have that, like, uh, you know, when you put the lines where the dash, it looks like, you know, not really good. And also how to put all of those labels in a stack order. So I have a point here, which is an airport, and it's already in a projected coordinate system because most of the tools in processing required a projected coordinate system myself. I usually use WGS84, but in this case, I'll just use a projection um, in UTM for this particular area. So I got an airport point, which is in UTM uh, 16 North. And what we're going to do is select the point that we have here and enable the processing toolbox and look for the multi ring buffer under vector geometry. When you double click that, you're going to have like the input layer. And if, in case you have like more points, you can use just a selected one if that is what you're after. And in this case, let's say we want 10 rings and we want 10 kilometers between each of those rings. And I usually like working with temporary scratch layers until the final result because then I can just easily delete without any problem. Okay. So once that is run, I can zoom to the layer and you can see that I have all of those polygons. So the output of this is a polygon. So we got all of those different polygons. Okay. So let's now style this. I'll close the processing toolbox and open the styling panel. And let's say we want to change this simple fill to a outline simple line like this. So when you have a line like this, and let, let me just put a stroke like 0 0.5 so it's a little bit um, more noticeable. If you change this to a dash line pattern, then and I'll lock the scale, let's say in 500,000. So it's really noticeable. If you zoom in, then you notice that you don't really have a dash there because you got double lines. You got one line for the polygon exterior ring and one for the inner. So what can we do? So instead of using an outline simple line, let's use a geometry generator. Okay, so what we're going to do is tell QGIS that for rendering purposes, we want to use the following expression. So if you search for exterior, you're going to notice that there's a function that is going to return to us just the exterior ring. So double click that exterior ring and get the geometry. And at the end, in the preview, you get a geometry of time line streak. So it's going to give us back a line. Now, if you want to know what are you going to get, you can use geometry to well-known text, something like this. And then you can check that it's a line string and it's in UTN coordinates. But in our case, we just want the exterior ring. One thing I don't particularly like about the documentation is in this case, it always uses like geometry from known, well-known text, but uh, just know that you can use this dollar sign geometry to get the parent feature, well, to get the features geometry actually. Okay, and then we can click OK. Now, one thing to consider is that in QGIS, it won't change automatically from polygon to the line string. So you need to do it by yourself. So now you got a line and then you can go to the simple line and style it as a dash line. And now you get those nice dashes. So just let's use a custom pattern and then you can notice that there's no more nasty overlaps because we are now just showing the actual exterior ring so let me clear all of it and now we have our airport so now let's label those and let's open these attribute table to see what we have so we got a distance here so we, let's label this distance okay 
So let's go to labels now and we can enable a single label. We're not going to do anything fancy, but now we want to change it for not the designator really, but the distance. Okay. And to put the labels at the correct position, we need to do something else because in this case, this is putting it if we go to the placement around the center, remember that our feature is originally what? A polygon. So we need to change that. And we're going to do again a geometry generator and just do the exact same thing that we did before. So we can just click here on the search. We can go to recent and then we can just get our exterior ring. We got that part here, but then again, we need to change it to our... Um, geometry type which is a line string now Q just doesn't detect it automatically now let's go and put this a little bit uh, bigger because i put a reference scale so let's say um 15 probably um let's put it a, little, a little big and a little bit bold and i don't like this part here so let me check here um in rendering it's the last one show upside down labels never okay so we're going to fix this now it kind of looks like it's stacked but it's not really stacked so if we want to have like a really stacked label and in a particular direction we can do the following trick so i'm just going to create a new temporary scratch layer but you can create uh whatever you want and i'll create it and call it uh line it's a line string, of course, and again, projected for the system. And I'll just put like a symbol label just so I can identify it. And let's say I want to create a line that goes from the center in this direction. Now, let's enable the snapping first. Okay, because this is a new profile and I don't have it. So we're going to the snapping there and just enable the snapping click on our label add a line and let's say i want to do it something like this okay go like this we go like this ah so it's uh this gets digitized streaming so i don't want to curve something like that and for symbol uh let's say i want to put uh, direction just something like that and you're going to understand why in a moment and i'm going to turn off my snapping so now what we want to do is we want to place the labels along this line and what we're going to do is go back to the ring and go to the geometry generator in the let's call this the placement tab and now in our geometry generator we're going to write another expression so what we want now is we want the intersection so let's look it up here intersection the intersection of the exterior ring with what with our other line that we have here so we need to get that feature so to call that feature we're going to call the geometry of the feature we cannot call it directly so i'm just going to double click the geometry and then it requests a feature so we're going to get that feature and we're going to get that feature using these other expressions. So get feature and it tells us from the layer. And in this case, the layer is called line. Then which attribute? Remember the attribute we use in this case was symbol. And then what value? Okay. So in our case, our value was direction so let's write the direction close the quote close this one close that one and close that and now we got a point because the intersection of two lines is a point and now we click ok so now we got our labels all around that and i'll just change the placement instead of parallel well we need to tell this that it's no longer a line string because it's actually a point and then after that, I like offset from point. 
to the top and then we just need to rotate this but before that we can stop editing this line and we can change the style to no symbol because we don't really want to see that line here let's go back to our rings and now the last step is just to rotate that label so let's go to the labeling part and if we go down there is a rotation angle here so we can edit this one and we're going to use again what well we already know how to get our feature that we're going to cheat and get from our recent expressions just our geometry so we got the geometry but we need the angle right so what we can do now is we already know that this is a line we can use this one that is called angle at vertex so if we click angle at vertex but puts it here be careful where you put your cursor because at that point it's going to get the insertion so here we have the angle at vertex. We already have the geometry and now we want to tell it which vertex. So we only have the start and the end. So I'll just use the start and close it. And I got an angle here and click OK. And that's it. Now we got all of our labels. They are rotated and they are like this. Now, final points. What if we want to have it on top of the line? But let's zoom here. And now we got this nasty dash line before behind our labels so we can fix that so let's use some masking if we go to the masking here and then we enable the mask and let's say i want to size one mask so not really that big let's try that one now to enable the mask this is something tricky you put the size of the mask here so it's like a little buffer that is drawn along the text and then you go to this part here where it says mask and this is where you actually enable it and you can enable it with other layers but then you need to go to that particular one so you select this part here and then you get a warning that you need to select both the symbol layer and the mask so let's select the mask here and now you see the masking now the one millimeter that i put was not enough so let's increase that to two millimeters and you can try let's see like three millimeters something like that and now you get a better masking effect it all depends on what you want to have okay and that's it so now you have a nice buffer multiple multiple rings um and dash line based on just showing the exterior rings just for rendering purpose at the end what you have is a polygon how to label those along a specific axis and stack and probably you could use like multi-line things here but then you need to take care of the rotation angle so it's a little bit more complex or you can use several lines i don't know and then how to do some masking so i hope you found particularly useful these steps in your qg's journey